Good morning, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, and welcome to today's webinar. So thank you for taking the time out of your, your busy schedules to, to take a look at today's webinar. I really do hope you find it useful and start using Revisto in your organizations and, and on your projects very soon. So my name is Rhys Lewis, and my role is Business Development Director for, for the UK and the European region and it's been a real exciting six months here so far I know it's, uh, I think we've helped lots of organizations really take control of data coordination and collaboration and taking that really to to the next level so a little bit of background about myself before I joined I spent uh, just over five years with a company called Arup who coincidentally now a customer which is great and prior to that I spent um, the same amount of time with an Autodesk reseller in, in the UK. So I've been providing innovative, innovative technology to the AEC space for 12 something years. And what I really love about what I do is really just about making people's lives that, uh, that much, a little bit easier, if you will. So first of all, let me just check that you can hear me okay and you can see my screen. So if you're not too familiar with uh, the GoToWebinar interface in the control panel, you can do a number of things. One of those is change your audio settings. So to ensure that you can, can hear me, if you can't, then just make sure that you, you've dialed in or you're, you're using your mic and your speakers. You can't contribute uh, via audio, but you can ask questions via the questions log. So if you could just do that now and uh, maybe type in the, the city that you're, you're based or the town that you're based in the questions log and that will just uh, allow me to ensure that you can hear me okay so yep if you just type in where you're dialing in from that would be great perfect i can see all of that coming through and a range of places as well and um, that's working perfect so if you do have questions throughout the presentation I'll do my very best to get to those at the end of today's session which will hopefully be around 45 minutes and if I don't answer them if I don't get enough time today then um, we can have a conversation afterwards so perfect you can hear me and see my screen so what are we going to cover today you've already read this um, when you got your invitation. So um, I won't read it out again. So just a very brief agenda for those who've just dialed in. Right, Revisto. What is Revisto? Well, for me as a headline, it's a coordination and collaboration platform that also integrates with, with virtual reality. So it's quite a diverse tool, actually. It does a very powerful thing, but make it seem very simple which is the true beauty because the current situation with a lot of people I speak to is there's just a vast amount of technology available which can put project teams off because there is just too much variety. And Revisto helps bring all of that together. So who uses Revisto? Lots of companies like yourself. I could see some of the companies that have signed up. In the, this is just a, you know, a handful of some of the firms that are using Revisto and have implemented the software in the last couple of months. So you can see engineers on there, architects, contractors, and more and more I'm seeing end clients get involved now where they're being handed as an additional deliverable at the end of the project a revisto version of that project as well and i'll explain why in a second so we have i probably need to update that number now over 60,000 global unique users across lots of countries the software is available in many different languages and we have our servers scattered around the world as well to service our international client base okay so Let's talk about the problem and coming back to the title of today's webinar, BIM coordination simplified. Well, for me, what I believe that to be is it, it can be a simpler process because right now it's quite a complicated process. So I'll ask a question in a second, uh, but what I tend to hear a lot of is that on a project, there are various project colleagues from different countries, different companies, 
that have got different software skills, have different software preferences. So having the ability to share information and assign tasks to somebody in the project can sometimes be difficult. So what we're looking at today is having the ability to simplify how you manage and track design and coordination issues. And that's really what BIM coordination for us here at Rubisto is, is having the ability to manage and track design and coordination issues. One of our customers sent us this really complicated uh, diagram here. Well, not complicated, it's uh, it's a busy diagram. So what they they were doing is they had a heck of a lot of things going on. So they would potentially federate a model in Navisworks, run a clash report, and then that report would be passed to the, the, the M&E engineer to, to deal with those clashes. Others were creating viewpoints in, in Navisworks and then taking a screenshot of that and, and sending that to maybe the architect. Others were just rep printing out documents, redlining those, and emailing that to the relevant person in the project and tracking that via Excel. So when you're getting involved with that, it's quite a complicated process. So just to understand who sent what to who, when, and if it's actually been done is a very difficult thing to do. So that can cause long delays, increased project cost, and Revisto is designed specifically to streamline this process. So I'm going to ask a poll, which I will launch now. So thinking about that, what I'd like you to do is on your screen now, how do you currently manage and track issues on your project? So if you just select one of the, the answers there, so are you do any of those or all of them, and, and there may be some I've missed out because I know that, you know there are lots of options in terms of technology and process. But just so we get a, you know, a good idea of where today's audience is at with this, so I'll leave it on there for another couple of seconds. Another 10% to vote and we close it off. I'm keen to, to hear what everyone is doing. Perfect, so we'll just close that down now. And let's, uh, let's take a look at those results. So hopefully you should be able to see those on your screen now. So quite a mixture. And you know that's just a common thing. I hear this a lot. So um, we're obviously starting off on the the same page here. and if you are doing that then Revisto can really transform the way you work. So back to the presentation and I'll jump into the software shortly. The workflow, so how does the new workflow look when you implement Revisto? Hopefully a lot simpler. So what you have right in the middle is Revisto which becomes your central collaboration platform that you can now give access to, to everyone in the project. You don't have to be a technical expert in any of these tools to be able to use Revisto, which is a big, big plus in my opinion. So we have direct plugins for, for Navisworks, AutoCAD, Revit, Rhino is now available in 4.4, Civil 3D. So we also have a lot of customers working on infrastructure projects, SketchUp and Archicad, and we can also import FBX and IFC. So we have quite a wide range of bases covered. So we can take in your geometry from, from lots of different places and in lots of different formats, 3D and 2D. The next step then is coming through to that management aspect of the data and the issues. So you can run a clash report in Navisworks and import that as well. You, we also support BCF, so if you're using Salibri, then all of that information can come through as well. So you may have in the Revisto project, you know, eight linked files from separate authoring tools, as well as a Clash report and or a BCF file from Salibri, all now in the Revisto project, which you then share with the project team, either via the cloud, which is AWS, or through a shared location of your choice. And then that's available to anyone that has Revisto installed. So you can install it on your PC, Mac, and on a tablet. So lots of people now uh, that I speak to want to have their project documentation 
and the model available to go now and walk around site and comment and create issues on the fly, take pictures and share those with the project team as well in real time. So all of that can be done in Revisto and I'll show you shortly. We do then also support virtual reality. So direct support for Vive and Oculus Rift. So if you have these headsets in your organizations, then literally with a one-click export from your authoring tool, you can then view that model in VR. Now, the big difference about Revisto is this isn't just visualization. What I like to refer to it as is, is information visualization, and you'll see why in a second. But you can not only view your model in virtual reality, you can also view the live feed of issues on that project in virtual reality as well in a design view meeting, perhaps with your client, and allow those to create and add comments as well. Totally up to you. So complete flexibility. Lots of reasons why you should be using Revisto. For me, personally, not being a Revit or a Navis or a Rhino expert, I think it's very, very simple to use, which is key when you have a lot of people that this could potentially uh, affect. The other big thing is having this single source of truth, which is very, very important in a project. To have one project window to understand exactly where you're at in that project, who's done what, who hasn't done what, is vital. And I'll run through some of the other benefits uh, throughout the presentation. Okay, so that was a, a bit of an introduction. So why don't we dive straight into, into the software itself? So I mentioned we support a range of applications. So once you've downloaded Revisto on the plugins, in your authoring tool, I'll be looking at a Revit example model today, uh, which is a building. And you'll notice within Revit, I've got the Revisto tab loaded. Here's a plugin, and there are a few buttons, and we'll run through these today. OK, so for me, as a non-Revit expert, I'm not technical in Revit or Navisworks or any of those tools, the first thing I'm going to do is export this model. So I can see here there's quite a bit of data there. There's a bunch of linked files. So I've got the structural and the MEP model in here as well. So let's export this project. So I'm presented with a list of things that I can export. So I can take the views, the viewpoints, levels, materials, and render appearance, appearance. Phases now, which is new in the latest version, I can take through the room data, and that's really important for navigation. I'll show you in a second. And all of, or some of the sheets. So this will allow me to pull through all of the sheets if I want to, or a few of them, and choose if they come through as a vector or uh, an image. And then just hit export, and that will run. This particular model probably took around 10 minutes to run, so we won't do that now. In the interest of time and your busy days, we'll just jump straight into the project that's already been converted. So here's that container Revit file now in Revisto. So I'm happy this has come through as expected. Now the first thing I'm going to do under preferences I can change things here. And navigation, what I'd suggest is when you are giving this model to the non-technical people in your organization or the less technical, you can select game mode. So with a few keys on the keyboard and your mouse, you can navigate around that model. However, if your preference is Revit or Navisworks, you can choose what, what works for you. So back to 3D. So what you're now doing is giving a very technical model to the whole project team, not just the technical people in that project, but even the non-technical people as well can now go in and collaborate and understand and view and present this uh, particular project. So I mentioned with a few keys on my mouse, I can go into the project, start navigating around with ease. So I'm just using the, the gaming controls, if you like, on my keyboard. And I can go in and take a look around this project quickly and easily. So the 3D data seems to have come through OK. If I select this wall here, all of the metadata has come through as well directly from Revit. So this is a point I made about the information visualization. All of that information has come through, which is very important. And I can do all of this in virtual reality as well. 
all on my, my tablet. So let's just go back home for a second. So happy that the data has come in, uh, the 3D element of it. Let's take a look at the 2D data quickly just to check that all of that has come through. So each model has been split up, great. And we can see all of the sheets are here. So if I just double click on this floor plan, that 2D sheet has come through as well. So I can go in and explore that. From here, I can do a number of things. I can jump to 3D. So I just double click on a particular area on the sheet that I want to do in 3D, and I jump in there. Which is perfect. Let's take a look at that sheet again. These sheets are intelligent as well because they've come in directly from Revit. So you can see I've got some links here. So if I click on that link, that will take me to that link sheet. Now what's a really, really powerful part of Revisto is you see I've got these green icons here. So if I click on that green icon, that's now going to do a very powerful and useful thing. It's overlaying that 2D sheet in the 3D model. So I can now do a number of different things. I can perform an additional check between the 3D and the 2D information, which is such a powerful thing to do. It's a great visual aid as well to explain to maybe you know, a non-technical uh, person, maybe one of the contractors on site or the client that the 3D information is derived from the 2D information. Maybe we want to check a detail, or maybe the project team are Huge stories where the, the MEP team is using Revit MEP and the structural engineers are using just 2D CAD. So this is another way to perform an additional check that you couldn't do elsewhere. And that's quite a cool feature that I, I really love, to be honest. So um, And that works with all of these sheets. So if I jump back to the original floor plan I was looking at, if I click on that green icon, again, that overlay is created automatically for me so I can go in here and take a look around with ease. Such a great visual aid, really, really powerful. Okay, so let's go back home. So what can you do with the, the model in terms of navigation and tools? And I'll come on to the, the BIM coordination element shortly. So you'll see there are a number of tools across the top. So this door icon is going to allow me to move through rooms one by one, which have been listed here on the right-hand side for me. So if I select the, the Office 214, that takes me to that office straight into the center of that room for me to take a look around. Perfect. I can type in the name of uh, one of the other rooms here. So maybe you want to look at 212, type that, and that takes me to that room. So getting around this building is very easy to do. I can go in and take measurements. So if I hit the ruler key and move that around, that's just going to snap to different surfaces as I move it. Maybe I want to know the minimum distance between these two walls to make sure they comply with code. And yes, they do come out of that. I can cut sections through this model using the scissor icon. So I can just position this anywhere. Uh, let's say we want to put it against that wall, come up here a little bit. And very quickly, I can start cutting the section through there. And maybe we want to save this as a new viewpoint. So I can click on that plus icon. And that's now created that as a new viewpoint, which is available for the rest of the project team. If I click home here, that will take me to this home view you've seen a few times now. So uh, getting lost in the Revisto project is quite a hard thing to do. So the viewpoints here, this drop in, again, have all come in directly from Revit. So I can move through those one by one. And I've created new viewpoints directly within Revisto as well. So here's the viewpoint I just created. And if I go up that list, here are some other viewpoints I've created as well. So this moves me on to my next point. The real exciting feature of 4.4 is the ability to, to isolate and color code object categories, linked files, levels, and so on and so forth. So what I've done here quickly and easily is isolated the ceilings and color coded the MEP model red. 
So just again, a great visual aid to go in and perform an additional check and understand that the model is correct, accurate, or more importantly, find out if it's not and then report that. I'm in, uh, in fly mode at the moment. So if I click on walk, that will then move me down to the nearest floor below my feet. So let's just show you how quick and easy it is to, to do that isolation and color coding whilst I've got your attention. So if I hit, click on this cube here, I can filter in lots of different ways. So I can look at specific objects. Maybe I only want to look at the air, ter air terminals rather. Or I can look at links. So there are a range of Revit models in here. Let's just hide them all. And maybe I only want to look uh, again at the, the MEP model. And let's give that uh, nice green color. And maybe we want to bring in the structural model as well. So we'll make that. A nice shade of purple slash pink. So again, just another great way to go in and color clash and understand if there are those different models are doing what they should be, or if anything's in the wrong place, and then report that accordingly. So what we've done so far is get our geometry into Revista, looked at how easy it is to navigate around room by room, how we can cut sections, color code different objects. We can also create video here directly within Revisto and invite our project colleagues into the project. So when you, one step I've missed is when you convert the project, you then click share, paste in the, the emails of your project colleagues, they'll then be able to collaborate with you. Once they're in the project, you can actually invite them into the project and have a meeting directly in the model and that can be your design review meeting where you're going through issues one by one which we'll we'll talk about next one thing if you are using navisworks i hear a lot of people tell me that in their typical design review meeting they'll have the, the navisworks expert driving the model on the screen with a lot of uh, information on the table which could be you know, marked up sheets and communication that's been sent around to try and understand where they are on that project. Sometimes I hear people find themselves getting lost within the Navisworks model. Now I can see a few heads nodding or, or sense it, should I say. If I click on this map icon, let's imagine that we are lost in this particular project. With Revisto, it's actually very difficult, as I mentioned earlier on, to get lost. So this is only a small example, but I've clicked that my map icon. It's shown me exactly where I am in plan and what level I'm on. So from here as well, I can move to another level just by selecting it. Maybe it's a, you know, a tower residential block and the client wants to, to move up to level 80. So I select the level, that then moves me to that level. I can go in, double click on that drop pin and that will take me directly back into that model at that exact level. So just to recap, we brought the model in, taking a look at how we can view the model in 2D and 3D, how you can overlay the 2D information on the 3D model, cut sections, measure, create viewpoints, and so on and so forth. Now, getting back to the, the core title of this webinar, BIM Coordination Simplified, let's take a look at the issue tracker. But I think it's also very important to show you some of the tools that are available. Okay, so, the issue tracker here is what I like to refer to as the project's single source of truth in terms of design and coordination issues. So you can see here I've got this list of issues that have been created in a range of different places. They may have been created in Revit, Navisworks, Revisto, Celebri, but they're all in one place here and they've been assigned appropriately and they're being tracked. So let's look at how we create, manage, track, and report. So let's just jump back to the 3D view, which is take me to this particular issue here. So if we go back home for a second, and let's just be creative now and look at creating some, some issues. So if I, maybe we just want to cut the model up here. 
maybe with a Emily engineer on this project and we have identified that maybe there's a particular clash with this duct. So anywhere now in the project in Revisto in 3D or 2D, I've got this plus icon. In my authoring tool, I've also got that plus icon. And that is how you create a new issue. So let's do that. Okay, so I can now position this drop-in, which will appear in the 2D and the 3D view. So I'm just going to stick that on that duct, if you like. Now on the left-hand side, I've got markup tools here. So now I don't have to go back, going back to my earlier slide, create a viewpoint within Navisworks or print out a PDF, redline that, and email that to somebody. This really is the future of BIM coordination. I'm going to do all of that now within the project, uh, embedded within the project team as well. So let's annotate the model, the project. So I can go in here now and start marking up. Perfect, uh, let's just keep this simple. So I'm going to add some texture as well. We'll call it hot MEP. And I can change the colors of the text, the size and so on and so forth. So I'll just make the text red here and pull that out. Perfect, I'm happy with that. I'm going to give it a, a name at the top, MEP Clash. That's how we create, done. The next step is to manage this. So this has been stored here, it's given it a unique ID, 88. Uh, to manage that now, I want to do a couple of things. So rather than send an email to somebody, I'm going to notify them in the project. So this um, project, Harman is the m and &E engineer, so I'm going to select him. He'll now get pinged directly within Revisto on his desktop, on his iPad, wherever he's got the software installed. So we've now got this real-time collaboration happening. It's not an email that's sunk down, or that's sinking down in his, in his inbox minute by minute that he'll get to, you know, when he has time. He's getting notified directly. He'll also get sent an email as a backup. So the next thing uh, I want to do is assign a deadline to this. So we have our next review meeting is in two weeks. So I want to ensure that this is resolved before then. So I'm going to put a deadline of the 8th of August. It's a critical issue on this project. So I'm going to add watches here. So I can select a number of people. So we'll add myself and maybe Craig here, who's Armand's, who's a project leader from the M&E side. And I can also tag this issue. So there are a few tags here I've created. So let's just tag that one, MEP. So the more information I put here, well, actually all of this information can be uh, used to filter those issues. So you can see the filter there. So that's the process of managing. How do I then track that? So in the issue tracker, I can filter the issues in lots of different ways. So I can type in the name of the issue. So you can see that one at the top, MEP. I can type in the issue ID, 88. I can filter the issues by tag. So maybe in our review meeting, we want to review all issues that have been tagged MEP. And there are all of the issues that we're going to discuss with the engineer in this project. and manage how they are getting along. So maybe this one here that's been assigned to Mike, we've discussed it, missed the deadline. There's a, you know, a good reason for it. So what we're going to do is put, um, extend that deadline and change the status to in progress and so on and so forth. So back to this issue at the top, every issue you can see here has its own a chat feed, if you like. So in here, I can add additional information. So this becomes my email chain. So the difference is I've now got accountability and trackability in the project. So that can come through. So that text is all notified directly there. So this issue again, here's the markup. What's really clever and intelligent is if I click on 3D, that takes me back to the, the 3D view of that issue. If I click on 2D, it'll show me the 2D sheets that issue affects. Now, what it's also done here is highlighted, on, I can see that all of the other issues on this sheet as well, and it's color coded them based on their status. So open, in progress, closed, and solved. If I click on 2D again, it'll show me all of the 
the sheets that that particular issue affects. So I know when I make that change, what sheets need updating. Now what's really powerful is Revisto is then dynamically linked back to all of these tools here. I've got the switch back facility. So when I double click on that issue, that then opens up where that issue is in my Revit model in this particular instance. So if I double click on this issue, it's difficult to show on, on one screen. So let me just pull this down a little bit. When I click on that, you can see in the background there, that's taking me directly to that issue. And if we uh, click on another issue, 2D, so that takes me directly there. So the amount of time and confusion this solves immediately, you just think about, and I've heard stories where somebody's been sent an email with a markup that doesn't make too much sense, and it's relating to a duct on the 80th floor. So that engineer's got to try and locate where that issue is. Such a big building that's very complex, they end up editing the wrong thing, which causes another issue. So with Revisto, I've, with a couple of seconds, created the issue, assigned it to somebody, they get pinged in Revisto, they double click on the issue, it takes them directly back to their authoring tool so they can update the model. And then in the issue, they mark that off as solved. So this particular person can only mark the issue as solved. In our next review meeting, we can filter the issues by our status, solved, and then go through them one by one and check that they are solved. The person with the relevant permissions can close that issue off. So maybe the project manager can do that. So we created an issue in 3D. Let's run through that process again of creating, managing, and tracking. So there are a number of ways you can do this uh, in terms of creating issues. So if we open up this floor plan, I can create an issue on the 2D sheet as well. I know that different users have different preferences in terms of, they work, in terms of um, working in 2D and 3D. And as I view the sheets as well, you'll notice I can pull up the issues so I can see exactly the performance of, of that sheet, if you like. But for now, I know there's an issue with this particular door, for example. We're in a meeting with uh, one of the clients who wants to extend that, the size of that door uh, because it's not big enough for the reception area. So again, click on the plus icon, position this accordingly, and then I can start marking up that drawing. So again, we'll just keep this simple. We can add some uh, text here. Uh, let's say increase door width, click done. And so on and so forth. So lots of different tools here in the in the markup section, and we'll call this door reception. For example, click done. And again, I go through the same process. It's given it its own ID. This one is actually something we need to assign to the architect, who's Nick. Again, I want to assign a deadline for this before that meeting, so this can be pushed out a bit further. Tag that issue door is already there, so I don't need to add it, and that's done. So you just think about how quickly I've done that, and that's now visible to the whole project team with the relevant permissions. Again, that issue knows where it is in 3D. So in the 3D view, I can see the issues as well. Again, they're color-coded by their status, and the blue one is the one we're looking at. Click on 2D, 2D again, and I can see all of the sheets that issue affects. So we've looked at creating an issue in 3D in Revisto, and in 2D, and how that's dynamically linked back to my authoring tool. If I scroll down the list here, what I want to show you, in the interest of, in the interest of time, is that let's just filter these issues by a clash report I brought in directly from Navisworks. So that here are a few examples. So you can see these are clashes. So within Navisworks, you can run your report, and you have a, another button in the tab here called Export clashes, you can then group the clashes and group assign them to the relevant people in the project. They then come in, as you can see, and then I go through the same process, assign them to somebody, uh, update the status accordingly, and go through the process we've just talked. So the issue tracker contains all issues, whether they've come in from Navisworks as a clash report, a BCF file, 
if you've created them in 2D or 3D in any of your authoring tools or directly in Revista, which is why it's referred to as the single source of truth. All issues are in one place, which you can then report on, which I'll, I'll get to shortly. So the last thing I want to show you, I want to create another issue. This time, I'm going to do that in Revit. So I don't know if we just jump back to one of the, the 3D views. So I can create uh, an issue directly within Revit as well. So you would see I've got that new issue tab. So let's imagine there's an issue with these panels. Uh, we've had a meeting with one of the architects who thinks these are in position correctly. So new issue. And again, go through the same process. So I'm going to annotate this and maybe we want to be a little bit more creative here maybe they need to face that way and I don't know that's where the Sun is for example so we'll just call this solar panel that will do click done and that's stored in the issue tracker so these last three issues you can see I've created an issue directly within Revisto in 3D, an issue in 2D. We've looked at issues that have come in directly from Navisworks. And here's an issue I've created directly within Revit, but stored in the issue tracker. So through here then, again, I just go through that process of managing that issue so then I can track progress, uh, put a deadline there. And this is something that's assigned to one of the other project colleagues. Uh, what do we tag that? Let's target as, as architecture for now. One thing I'm going to do which you unfortunately won't be able to see, you'll just have to take my word for it, is in the background here I've got this project on my iPad. So in this um, particular issue chat feed or the, the, the real-time messaging that you've got here is I can also take pictures, pictures with uh, my tablet I can attach additional documentation. So maybe I want to add that document there. And as you just saw, there's a range of file types I can import and say, refer to this guide, for example. So on my iPad now, that's come through on the issue tracker and I can see that directly on my iPad. So if you just watch this chat feature, I'm going to start typing away on my iPad to say, yes, got it. You'll notice if I click send, that's come through here. So your project team now are working and collaborating in real time. Maybe I'm out on site and uh, I'll just take a picture of my, my screen here with the iPad. Use that photo and I'm going to upload that into the issue tracker as well. So whilst I'm out on site, if I've got an internet connection, well, I can still do this if I haven't got an internet connection. It just wouldn't uh, upload until that connection is established. So I've got, you know, maybe 100 people on that project. Some are on their desktops, Mark, some are out on site um, in the field with their iPad. And you've got this real-time collaboration, real-time BIM coordination happening, which is slick and very, very simple and easy to use. So we've talked through how we create an issue, how we manage that, how we can then track that by in lots of different ways, by tag, by reporter. Maybe we want to look at all issues assigned to, to, to Arm and the architect on this project. So it's a very, very powerful tool to create, manage, and track issues. All of these issues in the single source of truth, as I said, are in one place. So I'm going to ask another question, and um, I didn't think it was worthwhile creating a poll for this, but just think about how long would it take you to produce an issue report for your project, for the whole project team. You've got a complete overview of everything. And this sort of brings me to my final point of the, the title of reporting. I've heard people tell me on a project it could take them half a day to collate all of that information together in one document because somebody's got an Excel spreadsheet or individuals have got their own Excel spreadsheets detailing what was sent to who and when and the status of it. Someone's got a, a, a clash report from Navisworks. They've handed over to the relevant party in the project to deal with. So information coming back to 
one of my slides earlier on, is here, there, and everywhere. And it's a complicated process, and it needs to be. That's not going to change. The process, however, can become simplified with Revisto. So to report on all of these issues now, what I can do is click on this reporting tool, which then takes me to my workspace. Now, for this project, you can see there are 90 issues. Now, what's really powerful here and very great on the eye is I can see all of the issues and their status. So I can see there are 50 open, red, 13 are in progress, amber and green, have uh, 16 of them have been solved. 11 have been closed off. And now the important one here, and this is a good and bad example, this just um, sort of identifies how lazy I am perhaps, but the missed deadlines in this particular project, there are 39, and very quickly I can go in there, see the ID, who it's assigned to, and print the report directly from here. So this is looking at all of the issues, or oh, I could type in the name of the ID in the issue tracker, and that would take me directly to it, and you know, I can change the status to in, uh, in progress if I need to. I can get into more detail where I'm looking at issues that have missed their deadlines, issues assigned to the engineer or the architect, and then I can produce a report from the delivery element here. So two ways of doing that, I can set up a report that would run every Friday at two o'clock, which would send a complete report to the whole project team. Set that up once and every Friday, without any additional work, the whole team gets sent an email to download that report as a PDF, Excel spreadsheet, or a chart. What I can do, is just send a report to myself now in these three versions. I'll then get sent an email with three links to download these reports, and I've got a version available, which I can show you now. So you click on the PDF link, and I'm within seconds I've generated a 90-page document that highlights all of the issues in that project. So I can see the ID, who it's assigned to, the original markup. I can download that if I want to take a closer look. I can see the contractor's been involved as well here, Greg, and he's been out on site and taken an issue, got an image of the issue, and so on and so forth. So this 90-page document, my single source of truth, has been created in a couple of seconds. And if I've set up a schedule for that to be sent out every week, then that reporting aspect is done automatically for me. So a very, very powerful and easy way of generating reports, which brings me to the sort of final piece of my, my headline today of create, manage, track, report. And hopefully that's made uh, made a lot of uh, a sense to you know we've sort of come to the final part of today's presentation so let's just summarize actually before i do that uh, i didn't mention the export schedule so when you convert your project first of all you run through the process we talked about earlier where you export the project and then share it with your project colleagues as that model is updating and progressing through design you set up the export schedule then that would take all of that information and you may have the architect uploading their model, the engineer uploading those and the contractor uploading theirs. You can say, well, upload this model five days a week at 8 p.m. when I'm not in the office. So you don't actually have to have that Revit model open or Revit itself. As long as you're logged on, that export will run. So when you come into the office the next day, the latest version is available for you to view. And Revisto keeps a copy of all of the previous revisions as well, so I can go back in and jump to a previous revision should I need to. So let's just rewind and recap um, what we, we've covered today. So we've talked about how we get our geometry into Revisto and how you can then invite the whole project team now. So how many, what percentage of your project team are Revit or Navisworks experts? And you know, from the conversations I have with lots of, of people, it's probably a low percentage of the project. Now, the whole project team can come in and explore the project and collaborate without any technical experience in some of the authoring tools I mentioned earlier on, or indeed have to have a license if they're just collaborating, managing and tracking issues and want to view what's going on. So we brought the geometry in. We've looked at how you can now compare the, the information, the 2D and the 3D information, 
how you can cut sections, take measurements, and so on and so forth. And the main piece of today, what I wanted to, to discuss is how you create, manage, track, and report issues through one user-friendly environment, which just simplifies that process we, we discussed earlier on. So we offer uh, trials of the software. So if you are, you are interested, then you can just get in touch with myself directly or through our website. It'll, it'll come back to me. So my details are on the screen, so make a note of these. The webinar's being recorded, so we will distribute this in the next couple of days. So, um, yep, I think that's probably as much as I wanted to run through today. Hopefully it's made sense, and I'd now like to open the floor to questions. So um, if you start chatting away and ask your questions in the chat log, as we discussed earlier, I'll do my very best to, to take five minutes of questions from uh, from everybody. So let's take a look at what comes through. Right, so that's where everyone was dialing in from. So I, you know, I encourage you now to, to ask questions. Now it's the time to to do that. Any plans for the HoloLens? Yes is the answer to that, and that's something that's on our development roadmap. Can we bring color code definition from Revit or Navisworks automatically instead of creating in Revisto? Yes, those um, color schemes would come through. When you export from Revisto, you just deselect the render appearance. And, uh, and that will come through. Links and work sets can be color coded as well. So I didn't show that, but I can go in and let's go home first of all, actually. So I can isolate and just look at uh, phases and go back in and color code those accordingly. Can we see the, the webinar later on? Yes, it will be recorded and available on our YouTube channel uh, probably in the next couple of days. Does everybody in a project team need a revisto license, or is there a free viewer, for example, if we're collaborating with clients? Okay, so a couple of answers to that question is if you want somebody to collaborate, manage, and track issues, then they need a license. So you purchase a license pool. What happens then is you get access to your license, and I can probably show you this. So in your license here, you can see I've got a team of 500 users. I can go through here, change their permissions, remove access pretty quickly, and paste in your email address to give you access to my license pool temporarily, if I want to, for you to come in and view, collaborate with us on the project. However, you can export an EXE, which is a snapshot of that model at that point in time. And you can choose whether you take the issues out as well. So the issues would be viewable, but they couldn't edit them. The beauty of that is you can literally give somebody an EXE file, and that's just a file they store somewhere or on your FTP site. They don't have to install any software, and they can do everything I've shown you here in terms of navigating around the model, cutting sections, overlaying the 2D sheets, and so on and so forth. Lots of questions. Great. I'll take another couple. Are there any plans for Android app already there? So I think I mentioned the iPad just because that's what I've got. I go back up here and zoom in. Oh, wrong button. You'll notice, yes, we've got our little Android friend on the list there as well. So you'll see all of that from uh, our website. Great insight. Perfect. That's great to hear. Uh, Reese, any tips on managing large number of clash detected issues exported from Navisworks into Visto? Yes, so what you can do as many, and again, I'm not a, a Navisworks expert, so um, what some of our customers are doing is they'll run a clash report, which may be uh, you know, a thousand 
clashes. What you can do then is group those down and then bring them into, so they may be 10, or you can and group assign them directly to the relevant people within Revisto. So if I just tag here again by Navis Clash, this original clash here may have ended up being, or this one, you know, that, that could have produced 100 clashes. So I move that slab or whatever it is that's causing the clash there, run the report again, and those 100 clashes have disappeared. I'll take another two questions. Uh, let's have a look. Do the 2D sheets need to be in Revit, i.e. can a DWG not produced in Revit be automatically aligned to a section view in Revit? So, yes. So all of the 2D sheets I've brought in here have come in directly from Revit, which just makes uh, my life a little easier. So they've all come in, they're intelligent. So the, these links here work and this overlay works, which is perfect. And it's overlaid it in that particular view, the clash view. Uh, what you can do is import 2D information directly. So DWF or PDF, that would then come in and you can set up a manual overlay here. So if I click set up 3D overlay on that 2D sheet you've brought in, I can go through here, select that area and then section the, the building appropriately, overlay it and then that is available for everyone else. So that's the manual way of doing and creating 3D overlays if, if you really want to. But the short answer is yes, it can be done. I'll take one more question. Let's have a look. Can you link Revit models and AutoCAD at the same time and review them? Absolutely. So back to this workflow diagram, actually, I can link in as many different models, 2D and 3D, as I need to. So I've seen some projects where there's a container Revit file like the one we've just looked at. Other projects may have a federated Navisworks model and a bunch of IFC files coming in. So as long as they're linked to the right project, you can see this particular model. If I click on link settings, it's connected to the right Revisto project, but I can connect it to another project that I'm working on. So there's a whole list here, and I can go through and select which project I want to link that to. So there's no limit in terms of how many models can be uh, imported into Revisto. Okay, so I think that um, if you do have any other questions, then feel free to get in touch directly. So in terms of actions here, what we'll do, well, first of all, I'd really like to thank you for taking your time uh, out of your busy days. Uh, you know, everyone I speak to is busy, and that's great news for the, the construction industry in general, so thank you. And if you would like to see more, then this recording will be shared. If you want to demo the software, then get in touch and we can organize that directly. And I'm more than happy to have more detailed conversations with your individual teams or your project teams if, if you'd like to have that uh, set up. And again, just get in touch. Also, please do sh uh, send your feedback through to us and let us know what you'd like to see next and your general thoughts about Revisto in general. So thank you for logging in today. We'll be in touch. Any questions, let us know. Enjoy the rest of your week. Bye-bye.